It's, uh, it's really, really exciting that, uh, that we're able to, I think, do, I think the first time that we've done a Sunday food drive for the mission. And, uh, and I appreciate everyone who had an opportunity and took the time and, uh, and, and gave of your own in order to bring and bless others. I'm going to ask David if he'll come up. Uh, David Berry, who is, uh, well, he kind of kind of runs the place, kind of, I guess you would figure. He's, what, what is your title? Depends on what today. So I'm, I'm up there. I'm up there quite often. I'll let you hold on to that. And are we, are we in the frame, Owen? Do we need, are we good? Okay, good. Because, you know, everybody online needs to be able to see everybody's here. So, you know, I, I noticed that sometimes the, the business cards change and the titles on the door. So I never remember what your role is. So officially you are, what, what, what are you called? I'm the executive director. The executive director. That sounds incredibly important, and we are so thankful to have David here. So we've been partnering with you, particularly just kind of like me and you partnering for, has it been 10 years? I think it's been longer than that. Has it been longer than that? Because I remember when we first came, I got acquainted with you, mm -hmm. and you said, hey, here's what I'd like for you to be able to do. I'd like for you to, to think about coming over and sharing before our meal for devotion time. And, uh, and I thought that was a really good idea. Mm -hmm. It just took me about two years to figure out how to make that happen. And uh, so thankfully it did, and uh, we've been able to do that. And, and as a church, we've been partnering with the mission for, for a number of years uh, just through our regular giving. And uh, so what you give each week, a portion of that goes to the mission every month. And, uh, and we're thankful for your faithfulness in that. And we've had some folks come over and serve at various times in various different ways. And I just want to tell you, we love the mission. We love what you guys do. And we're very, very appreciative of how you minister to our community. And uh, we, we, we count it an honor to be able to lock arms with you. And uh, I just want you to know that from, from my heart. I know that's how they feel. Uh, they told me to tell you that. So, <laughs> what, what's, It's definitely a pleasure. What's some of the biggest plans you got coming up for the mission? Some things that are just around the corner. Oh man! First, let me let me tell you how how great your pastor is. Oh, come on he now. he is the he's the longest running, most consistent <laughs> pastor we've had coming to the mission. Yeah, we can count on him every Tuesday. And there's only well, been not a, this past week. I had well, to, I had to there's only been a handful of times, but <laughs> those are those are okay because it was still ministry related or family related, but. Uh, He's, he's been a real gift to our people, and people actually look forward to, to seeing him. So that's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, you know, executive director, but what does that really mean? You know, I, I'm, I'm surrounded by awesome people. That's really what it's about. Um, I, I can't do this alone. There's no way we can do this alone. Um, as you come in this morning, you saw Justin out there with me, Pastor Justin. He, uh, man, I, I, don't, I don't think I've met anyone with a, a more beautiful mind and a beautiful heart for Jesus. And I'm just blessed to to serve with him, to do ministry together. That's what it's about. We're surrounded by great people. I'm blessed to have my wife with me every day. It's, it's a team effort. And uh, yeah, we got, we got big things for Jesus. At the end of the day, it's, we don't want to be the biggest, the best, the greatest organization, the ministry around. We just, we're proud to stand with them and among them in our city. We got great organizations, great resources, and we just bring them in. We recruit those resources in. And moving forward, uh, we have almost the entire block now. We're purchased downtown. So next to us uh, in the future, we're looking at it doing a, a new day center. Because if you've been to the mission, we're packed out. And uh, we're, not, we're not getting bigger for the sake of getting bigger. Um, we just want to get better at loving people for Jesus. And in January, we're going to be opening our enrichment center, which is a, a, a doctor's office. And it's going to be for our youth and our families just because everyone's packed in together now. So have a place where single moms, single dads, two-parent households can come and bring their children and be able to get a shower and get something to eat. Uh, we're, we're just excited about that. And it takes a community. It really does. It takes a community to change a community. Not one person, not one organization, not one source can take credit for this. Only God. <laughs> Only God. And, and if you haven't been by the mission, I double dog dare you. Come by and see Come and see what you're supporting, because you are supporting. This food that you brought in this morning we're gonna, is going to go out to the families. We need more food. It's an ongoing thing that we're doing. We do about 30 to 50 families a day. Numbers have been increasing. We're doing 150 uh, meals for lunchtime each day. So the needs are growing, and we need people. 
people to come in and volunteer. I see Ms. Brenda. She comes in. She helps. She's done some crocheting. She makes insanely oat, these great oatmeal bars. Um, I'm waiting for her to bring me some more. <laughs> but it's, it's, people, it's people from among you who are going out and being the hands and feet of Christ. And that's the only way people get transformed is being in the presence of Jesus coming through the hands and feet of people like you. So continue to join us. Come out. Help us. Serve with us and uh, continue to lift up this man and his family. Him and his wife and his kids are absolutely beautiful people. Some of my favorite people in the entire world. You are blessed to have the leader that you have. So when it comes to folks that, that maybe forgot or didn't, weren't able to give today, what are some of the, what are some of the best ways that, that they can do? It, is Amazon, does that work yeah, well for we you guys? Yeah, we got a wish list on Amazon. You can go to our website. We have a link to Amazon. Um, you can order through Amazon and they ship it right to us. You can drop it by anytime. We're there Monday through Thursday from 8.30 in the morning till 3.30 in the afternoon. Fridays, we're there till 1.30. Uh, drop it by. You can bring it by the office. You know, Pastor Kevin comes on Tuesdays. That's right. He'll pop in his truck and bring it over. Um, so, yeah, there, there's multiple ways. You can do Instacart. Uh, do it through Aldi or Publix or Walmart or whatever, and they'll, we'll get deliveries from them throughout the weeks as well. So it's, it's all about convenience. It's getting the resources to the people that are used immediately, which is pretty cool. So it's, it's instant return on, on your sewing into this ministry. We've been around since 1977. And my wife and I, this is our 20th year that we're, we're starting. So we got some roots. We ain't going anywhere. The list that, that Arlene provided for us that everybody got in several different ways, email, Facebook, that, that's kind of like an ongoing yes. list of basic things. So any of those things, they come across, you know, BOGO at Publix or a, a great deal. That if, they, if they'll watch Facebook and if they'll follow the yep. mission from time to time, you guys will post things about, hey, there's a great sale going on yes. right now for Chef Boyardee, things of that yep. nature. And they can, just, they can just do that. And the most convenient way is just do it through Amazon or, or yep. through, uh, through Walmart. And if you have children, just think kid, kid-friendly snacks and kid-friendly foods. Because if, if your children will eat it, our kids will eat it that come through the mission. If your kids won't eat it, then their kids probably won't eat it because the kids are kids. doesn't matter where they are on the social economic scale. Kids are kids. So think kid-friendly snacks they can do after, after school, on the weekends. They can prepare on their own. Sometimes parents aren't available. They're either at work or incapacitated. That's just the reality of it. So having kid-friendly foods that they can prepare at home to eat as well is always something to remember. One of the things we'll do, we'll put, bring, Al, don't let me forget, we'll bring one of the plates and we'll leave it down here at the altar, okay? So as folks are going out, you give your regular stuff, but we'll bring one plate down here. And if folks want to say, hey, you know, I didn't get a chance to go buy, but I'd like to give, you can put cash and you can put checks, but make sure to make out the checks too. To the mission. You can the do mission. the mission of Winter Haven or just the mission, cash, Good. checks, cards, small children, small animals. We'll put them all to use. You, so. <laughs> you, you're sending some of them kids back, David. I'm just telling you. It's just, nah, I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, you bring up a great point that I, I really want to highlight, that, that folks can go to the mission and serve just like Miss Brenda's doing. Yep. She's going and she's teaching somebody how to do crochet. And you're like, wait a minute. I, I mean, I didn't think that was the kind of thing that they needed at, at the mission. But you guys are using those types of skills as, as a way to enrich yep. the people, encourage the people, and give them something that they can, they can learn and they can actually enjoy doing. And that is like incarnational ministry. That's just being present and sharing. And, and there's not any one of these folks that can't be a part of that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I could be here all day talking to you about things we do from art therapy, music therapy. We have pastor, a pastor comes in, does guitar lessons. We do drum circle therapy, um, different arts and crafts, crocheting, oil paints, watercolors. Um, if you guys know Pastor Justin, his wife, Miss Holly, is one of the most brilliant artists you would ever see in the world. Uh, so, you know, we have inlets for art supplies and things like that. So if you like doing arts and crafts, come in. Do it with our people. That's, that's discipleship. Sitting down with someone and playing a game with them, playing checkers, playing a game of cards, doing an art and craft project. That's all engaging their mind in a different way for Jesus. Because then the spirit kicks in. 53% uh, of homeless people have a traumatic brain injury. 53%. So we're having to deal with stuff like that. So a lot of cognitive behavioral therapies, but in the name of Jesus. Mm. Engaging their brains differently so we can grow their spirit. And you also play bingo on Tuesday, so. 
Yeah, once a month we do I bingo mean, and uh, they, we do candy bars and oh, granola bars, and you can learn a lot by people how they win and lose a bingo, let me tell you. Awesome. So That's yeah. good stuff. I um, want, want to pray, pray over you Absolutely. guys if we can. Um, what, 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 what's some of the biggest needs that the mission has um, you know, that we can be praying over? Uh, I know you've got, you've got a, uh, some roles to fill here after the first of the year, and, and you're, uh, you're needing that. Anything else that you can think of that... Yeah, you know, we're, we're constantly just looking at, you know, where are the needs? How can we meet the needs? So the, 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 the resources to meet those needs, um, I mean, it's a given. Everyone needs finances, of course. But, yeah, we're, we're focused on meeting the needs of the people. I'm not good at asking for money. I'm just good at, okay, here's a need. Let's try to meet it. Let's love on people. So, yeah, fi financial giving is, is big for what we do. We don't receive any government funding. No federal dollars support what we do. It's all community-supported. So financial giving, um, any type of, of art supplies are great, food items, of course, but then people. Pray, pray for, for us to get the people that love people, not just to check off on a to-do list, but actually love people and want to bring their gifts and their talents to serve. Because, yeah, we do have some positions we need to fill in the new year, and we have to add the finances in place to do that. And uh, so we just want to keep loving people for Jesus. Good. So, I'll, Justin, if you'll come on up, I want to have you up here. Miss Brenda, why don't you come up here for a minute? And, Kate, why don't you make your way out of the sound booth? Kate's here. Oh, he let, me, let me, I got to brag on Kate for a minute. I love this dude. He brought this energy to the mission over the summer, and he just knocked it out of the park. Um, I was, I was, there was a few moments I was in fear that uh, this dude's going to be taking my position. <laughs> and uh, he, he fit so well, and he brought so much joy and energy and, and love to people. So thank you, man. If, uh, if you're one of those folks that um, signed up and you received the information that you're on the mission prayer partner team. You say, I signed up to pray for the mission. Is anybody in here that's, that's names on that list? That you tell me, raise your hand, tell me I'm on that list. No, we need some folks that are on that that can be praying for these guys all the time. Love them. Father, we just, uh, we thank you so much for the mission. We thank you for the, the, the faithful impact that they have had in Winter Haven for, for many years. God, I thank you for, uh, for Pastor Tom who had that vision so long ago. What a, what a giant of a little man. Mm -hmm. And uh, miss him dearly. But, uh, but, but I'm, I'm so thankful that he is in the presence of your son. Whatever that looks like, I know that he is having quite a time. I pray that, uh, that you will encourage Justin, you'll encourage David, Arlene, uh, Jim, all the folks there, uh, Miss Ann that are serving daily, every day, Miss Danielle and, and uh, Julie. And so there's just so many that, that give of their time week in, week out, day in, day out. And I pray that you would encourage them. I know there are many days that they go home feeling like nothing was accomplished. They cleaned up messes and they broke up fights. I had to call the police to, to get someone removed because they weren't in a good state of mind to, to be positive there. And I know they go home discouraged and feeling like they're not making much progress, but they're being the hands and feet of your son. And I thank you for that. And I pray that you would encourage them. You would strengthen them. You would give them wisdom. I pray for the board that you would give them the ability to, to know how to accomplish your purpose for the mission and to be able to find those dollars that are, that are yours, that are in somebody else's pocket for the time being. I pray that you will help them to, uh, uh, to figure out how to, to make that possible and, 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 and that you would um, just burden people in the community to be a help. I pray that you would burden Oasis Church more than, than we even are now, that we would look for uh, places that we can serve and consider the things that we already know how to do and, and simply ask, hey, is it possible that I could do this at the mission? Would that be a help? Uh, Father, I pray that you'd give our people the courage to ask that question. Um, God, as we have a, a, an opportunity coming up this month, on Saturday the 21st, I pray that you would encourage our people to be a part of the breakfast that we'll serve through the youth group, that you'll uh, give them a desire to, to participate in some way so that they might be uh, part of the partnership that, that we are very thankful for. God, we just ask that you would encourage, you would provide a straight path to the way that, uh, that you intend to expand and build on what you're already doing in the mission, and we just look forward to every opportunity that you give them as we wait on the return of your son 
We thank you and we love you. First in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Thank you for the mission. Love you guys. And uh, yeah, we look for, uh, for more donations to come. Again, we'll leave a plate down here. If you'd like to give, you can put cash and checks to the mission right here. If you want to give online through Amazon, you can do that. And that's all the time. You know, it's not just food drive time. It's just any time that you have, uh, you know, that God leads you to do that. All right. I'll go ahead and tell you. Write it down. We're going to start Romans next week. Now, that is a big, I just want you to understand. You go, okay, cool. No, you don't, you don't get it. Um, I, I am not just a little intimidated by the book of Romans. The book of Romans is like, the New Testament book. I mean, there is so much there that I will never be able to dig out. And I promise you, to the best of our ability, we will not spend three years in Romans, okay? I promise you we will try. And if we get to that Sunday of the third year, I promise we'll take a break, okay? (laughs) But... We really do want to dig in as best we can, but, but, but grow through such a huge, huge nugget of the New Testament and, uh, and, and the, the basis of a lot of what we theologically understand as Christians. We're going to start that next week. So I want you to go ahead and start reading ahead. We're going to go Romans 1 through 17, maybe, okay? So go ahead, read. You say, how, how much am I supposed to read? You know, it wouldn't hurt you to read Romans 1, 1 to 17, one time a day between now and next Sunday. At least then you'll know what in the world it is I'm talking about if I forget to bring up the stuff that, that and you can ask me, well, hey, what about this? And then we can carry on the conversation. So I hope to be able to tell you that every week, how far we're going to go so that you can be ready, you can be on board, and then we can learn together because that's what we're going to do. Romans 1, 1 to 17 next week. But for this week, I just want to encourage you. This week, I just want to kind of, if I can, I kind of like to springboard off of what Chad brought last week. Very thankful for the message that he brought in reminding us of, of, of where we were and where we would be. But God had a different plan. I'm thankful for that message. And as I was reading along, I came across a word that I'd like to highlight. And I found it six times in the book of Ephesians. And I think we can walk through. What we're calling this today is the new way to walk. The new way to walk. Now, I know the the movies, you know, the, 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 the hunched over guy comes to the door, answers the door, and he says, walk this way. And he walks away from the door and the comedian coming behind him slumps over and begins to follow him. That's not exactly what the the doorkeeper was talking about. Though it's pretty funny, and and I giggle at it every time I see it. What Paul is going to talk about is now that we are different, now that the but God incident has happened, now what? And it's a whole new way to walk, a whole new way to to live. When sinners are saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus' death and resurrection, they're given a whole new way to live. From time to time, you'll hear me pray and thank God for the fact that we have an entirely new destiny for the future and a new purpose for today. That's what we're talking about. The purpose that God has for us is very specific And he calls us into that walk. So as we remember last week, we remember how we used to walk. Ephesians chapter 2, to just remind you what Chad led us through last week. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked. Following the course of this world, following the prince and the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. Are you a follower of Jesus today? Has Jesus saved you by His grace through His death and resurrection? Are you a child of God? 
If the answer to that is yes, then you need to remember how you once walked. Because you've not always walked that way. Before Christ, you were as, as broken and as set on your sin and following the ways of your heart as the rest of mankind. And we were all positioned to be the recipients of God's wrath. Verse number four. But God. But God being rich in mercy... Because of his great love which, uh, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That is so rich. But the bottom line is, is that if you know Jesus as Savior in a very real sense, you have been crucified with him. You've been buried and raised with him so that your new life has an actual connection to his death and resurrection. You say, how is that possible? Only by God's grace and only by the Holy Spirit's ability to take us and plunge us into the reality of Jesus it says, so that in the coming ages, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So that in the days following your conversion, he might continue to show his grace through you, to you, in you, as you live out his purpose for today. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works, so that no one would boast because we would if we could. But our salvation has nothing whatsoever to do with us. Even when someone asks you, how did you become a child of God? I find it very discouraging when we even say, well, I prayed to receive it. Because it sounds like that we were saved because we prayed to receive Jesus. The bottom line is, is that we are saved only by God's grace, only by God's doing. The prayer of reception is just the response that we have to God's grace already active in our life. How did you come to know Jesus as your Savior? Well, sir, well, ma'am, I just got to tell you, I'm saved only by God's grace and nothing more, nothing of myself. And all I did was to respond to that grace by receiving Jesus, by trusting him personally and receiving that free gift. You once were dead in your sin. You once were shackled to the life of one broken and going contrary to God. But God. But God has transported you from darkness to light. From death to life. He's brought you from being his enemy to being his child. Through new birth hot dog, through adoption that can never be revoked. If you know Jesus as Savior, you are in the family of God because of the grace of God. Does that make sense? If you know Jesus as Savior, you are in. <coughs> you didn't do anything to get in. He brought you in by His grace. Now, now that you're in, he says, here's what I want you to do. So many folks are trying to do to get in. And no amount of doing is ever going to get you in. You may have a, a, a traumatic life circumstance where you're going down in a hurry. You're going the wrong direction in a hurry. And then you meet someone who loves Jesus. And they say to you, hey, you're going in the wrong direction. Why don't you come with me to church? And you go with them to church and you're like, wow, okay, these are better people. I, I like hanging with these people. These people aren't tempting me to do this, that, or the other. And you get involved and you get excited. And someone says, hey, do you know Jesus as your Savior? And you go, yeah, I do. I do. You go, no, you don't. 
Not unless you have by faith trusted him yourself. Just because you're surrounded by better people and it's, it's better circumstances and things are brighter than they were yesterday, that doesn't make you saved. Only God's grace saves you through faith in him. Don't try to do to get in because you won't ever get in by doing or you'd brag about it. That's what the verse says. You get in by God's grace through faith in Jesus. Now, once you're in, he says, now that you're in, I want to teach you, I want to show you how to live. And he uses this word walk six times. Six times he uses it in terms of this is what I want you to do. We're just going to blow through these real quickly. In the book of Ephesians, he says right here off the bat, Ephesians 2.10, He says, for we are his workmanship. We are God's masterpiece. Those that are in the faith, those who are in Christ, those who are a part of his family, we're like God's like masterwork that he's working on for his glory. He's using us to accomplish his purpose. He didn't have to do that. He wants to do that. And that is even a part of his grace as well. So if you're in, if you're a part of the family, you're a part of his master work. I don't care what folks have said about you. I don't care how you feel about yourself. God has you and says, I'm going to use him. I'm going to use her. It's not about her past. It's not about his past. It's not about his future or what he might could make of himself or herself. No, he or she is my masterwork. And I'm going to transform him. I'm going to transform her. And I'm going to use her in a powerful way. We are created, the verse says, in Christ Jesus for what? Good works. Like, I knew there was something I was going to have to chase. <clears throat> I knew that, that, that there was something I was going to have to try to do and, and do these works that I'm not ever, ever going to be able to figure out. How am I ever going to be able to figure that out? You don't have to. Look what else the verse says. These are good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What's the first thing that, 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 that the, the, the passage here tells us that the author, yes, Paul, but inspired by the Holy Spirit, what is the first thing God wants us to recognize? He's like, you're new. You're in Christ. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to now begin walking according to God's agenda instead of your agenda. Well, what does that look like? That looks like whatever plans you have, whatever thoughts you had about your future, whatever ideas you had about what you're good at and what you should or shouldn't be doing, I want you to now take control of all of that and I want you to hand it to God himself. I want you to say, I'm no longer going to evaluate what's best for me. I'm going to give you control of that. I'm going to ride with you from now on. And the verse tells us when we begin to just simply release control of our life to God's agenda, He'll lead us right into the good works that are already prepared for me. It's not like i got to go find a good work to do. He says, if you'll ride with me, if you'll give me control, then I'll take you into all that I have prepared for you. You remember when Jesus would come across folks and they would be interested and they would begin to think that maybe this guy is Messiah? What did Jesus say to them? He invited them with two words. What was it? Follow me. You know, when you're following Jesus, you're always going to be at the right place at the right time. When you're following Jesus, you're not ever going to be late. You're not ever going to wonder whether or not I'm where I'm supposed to be because you're like, well, Jesus stops, I'm going to stop. And I'm going to worry about what's not happening because I'm just walking with him. And I'm where I'm supposed to be till he gets up and moves. I'm going to keep following him. Step number one in your new walk, Christian, walk according to God's agenda. Seek first his kingdom, his righteousness, and, and everything else, Jesus says, will be added. You just follow me. Just get up every day and say, okay, Lord, I've got this job, so I'm going to be on time. But ultimately, I want your will for my life. 
we've got these plans, but you can change our mind if you want because ultimately I want what you want more than what I want because I want to follow your agenda. The second step, not only walking according to God's agenda, but Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 says, Therefore, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk, to live in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. What is this calling? He's just spent chapter 3 talking about how that, that this redemption that we have in Christ has brought together Jew and Gentile. Those two groups of people who just didn't get along. Well, the Gentiles didn't get it, but the Jews hated the Gentiles and would have never cohabitated with them. Paul says, hey, you know what? Jesus, through his death and resurrection, has now made a way to the Father, which is by faith in him. And oh, by the way, it's open for Jew and Gentile both. So slide over. Somebody else is riding a bus with you now, Jews. The Gentiles as well. And, and don't put them to the back. Don't make them find another seat. You just scoot your little Jewish self over and let your Gentile brother sit down with you and ask him some questions about how we might do ministry together because that's how God's going to do it from now on. And they're having to figure this out. And so Paul says, here's what you do. I want you to live. I want you to walk. Are you in the body? Yes, I am. Are you a Jew? You, of course I am. Are you in the body? Yes, I am. Are you a Gentile? That's what they call me. Okay, well then you two are together, and here's what I want you to do. I want you to both act in a way that is worthy of what you've been called. What have we been called? We've been called in Christ. We've been called a part of the body of God. We've been called a part of this larger group. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to act like it. I want you to walk worthy of what you've been called. I want it to be a, a walk, verse 2, of humility, gentleness, and patience with one another. I want you to, to set aside what you might think about yourself and begin to see yourself in some better eyes and recognize you're never going to be any better than anybody else. Nobody's ever going to be less than you. It's not a comparison about who has more or less baggage in their life. It's about that we all got in the same way by God's grace through faith. And guess what? We get to lock arms for God's glory. We get to walk this thing out. Red, yellow, black, white, brown, this side of the track, that side of the track, this accent, that accent. Those of us who don't have accents. We all work together for the glory of God, right? That's how you walk worth. You intentionally pursue humility and unity in this group of folks. But you know how many churches aren't living in humility and they don't care about being unified as long as they get what they want the way they want it. Paul says, uh-uh. That's not the way we live now. That's the way you used to live. The way we live now, we humble ourselves and we, per, we pursue unity and love and we appreciate the differences and the nuances. And boy, we're just going to be better together than we could ever be by ourselves. Walk in the body with humility and unity. Number three, found in verse 17 in the same chapter. Now I say this. And testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. Here's what he's saying. Don't keep living like you used to live. You, 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 you're going a different direction. You're in a different family. Don't walk that way anymore. Jesus is not going to lead you that direction. So you need to recognize whatever ways you used to walk... And those that aren't going the same way Jesus is going, you need to turn around and catch up with the rest of us. Catch back up here. He, he says it a little different in verse number 22, 23, and 24. He talks about putting off so that you can put on. He says, you're to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires. You're to put that off. You say, wait a minute, I thought I'd been saved. You have, but guess what? You still woke up with you. And while God has set you free from your sin, sin's going to be right there on your nightstand waiting for you every morning. 
If you take it and put it on, guess what it'll do? It'll be active in your life. The way you used to talk will sit right there on the nightstand waiting for you every morning. You put that back in your mouth, you'll go right back outside the door talking the way you used to talk. Everything you used to do and be will be there waiting. The difference is before the but God moment, you didn't have any choice. You were just talking, you were doing because you were a slave to sin. Now you get to decide whether you're going to walk with sin or not. But I'm just telling you, you walk with it, it will display itself in your life. And Paul's going, oh, we're not doing that no more. I'm not saying that you're not ever going to sin. We all know better than that. But what I am saying is you don't have to put the sin in your pocket in the morning. You need to learn how to put that stuff off. The things that are dirty, you put off. Now, teenagers don't figure that out yet. But most of the time, clothes are dirty. You learn that I need to take the dirty clothes off and put the clean clothes on. He goes on to say that. He says to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, verse 23. Verse 24, and put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. We need to get up every morning. We need to recognize if I leave myself to myself, I will do exactly what I've always done. I'll fall right back into the same patterns, the same habits. I'll run with the same folks if I let myself, but I don't have to. I can set those dirty clothes off and I can put on the righteousness of Christ that is mine, not because I earned it, not because I finally attained to it, but because he gave it to me. He gave it to you. He's given you and me the ability to walk in righteousness. We just have to say yes to that and no to the old way. Pastor, how many years are we going to have to do that? Well, I don't know. How many years are you planning to stay alive? I reckon that long. You're going to have to learn to say no to the things that will harm and yes to to the things that are reflective of Christ. Now, here's the good news. The more you say no to the stuff that needs to be said no to, the less loud that stuff's going to be on your nightstand. In fact, it might be in your room, and it'll be there if you go hunting for it, but it'll be so far in the back of the closet because you've gotten so used to saying no to it that it's not there. And if you say yes to the things of God and yes to his agenda and yes to whatever he wants, it'll become so second nature to you that it'll come and become your favorite flannel shirt that you wear or whatever that thing is that just, it's, it's just gives you comfort when you put it on because it feels so good because it's your favorite. You put that on. But you have to decide to do that. You have to decide, I'm going to walk according to personal holiness. I'm going to pursue personal holiness. where folks get tripped up. When they hear us say these things, they think we're talking about pursuing personal holiness so that I'll have more good on this side than I got bad on this side, and then God will be pleased and he'll bring me into the family. It don't work that way. You'll never be able to do enough good to get in. You're only in by God's grace through faith. But now that you're in, what does he want us to do? Live like it. Act like it. Some of you are married. And I only understand the male half of being married. But I understand that quite well. There's a way that I lived before I was married. I don't live that way anymore. Some aspects of it took longer for me to figure out than others. Why? Because that's not, that's not who I am anymore. It's not, it's not me anymore. It's us. And so I've learned how to act like I'm married some of the days of the week. But it's an ongoing thing. But you know what? There are now things that I'm just so used to doing that I would have never done as a single man. I'm just so used to doing as a married man that just it's natural. I wouldn't know what to do without it. Same way with our walk with Jesus. We have to pursue personal holiness because we can actually move in that direction. And God will help us if we will just say no and yes to the appropriate thing. Number four. Chapter five, verse one and two. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children. Imitators of God as beloved children. You've seen kids act like their dad. Kids act like their mom. They just do. Sometimes we're tickled about that. We think, oh, man, yes, they got that. And sometimes we're like, oh, no, 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 don't do do that. 
Don't do that. that, that Daddy didn't mean that. Okay? Don't, no, no. Well, that's because we have earthly, broken, trying to figure it out parents. But it's the same concept. We've been brought into the family of God, and He's our perfect heavenly Father. And Paul's like, oh, yeah. Imitate Him all day long. Here's what you want to imitate. Walk, he says, verse 2, in the love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. He's like, here's what I want you to do. Imitate your Abba. Imitate your daddy. Imitate your heavenly father and live out his love. And you're like, I don't know how to do that because he's God and I can't. And he goes, yeah, you do. He's shown us how to love in the person of his son who also is God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God the Son has revealed what the love of God looks like. You know what it looks like? You ready? Sacrifice. Setting aside what I can do and be for the benefit and the blessing of others. Man, I kind of like it when folks do for me. I, I kind of like it when, when others like sacrifice of themselves so that I can benefit. God says, I want you to learn how to see others with love. How, how can David and Justin get the right kind of people at the mission? It's real simple. All that has to happen is for God's people to say, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say yes to God's agenda, and part of that is desiring to love others like He does, regardless of how they talk, regardless of how they smell, regardless of their tendencies, regardless of the, uh, of the things that they do that I don't understand, and I don't have all the answers. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wade out into the muck and the mire And I'm going to love them. You know who you'll find out in the muck and the mire? Your Savior and mine. Because guess what? That's where he found you. That's where he found me. He says your new purpose for today is to walk in love on purpose. But there's another side to the coin of love. Because sometimes we say, We're going to walk out in love, and and sometimes folks want us to love us, want us to love them, but not be the witness that God has called us to be. So he catches that on down in the same chapter, verse number 8 of chapter number 5. He says, for at one time you were darkness. Yeah, that was before the but God moment. But now you are light in the Lord. Get ready. Walk as children of light. Live out the light. Yes, you are to love, but in that muck and mire, you also need to be a light. Who is that light pointing to you? Pointing to, not to you. Who's it pointing to? It's pointing to Christ. It is a beacon. It is a witness. It is this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine, and I'm going to walk as a reflector of the light of the world. So that not only am I loving, but I'm also showing the way. I'm also reflecting His truth. John chapter 1 verse number 14 said Jesus was both and. He was full of both grace or love and truth. Jesus didn't come bringing just love, 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 love. No, Jesus brought love in its full, in its abundance. And he brought truth that cut to the bone. But Jesus had the way of balancing both. That's what we're called to do. Imitate him in his love, reflect him in his light. The last one. Same chapter, verse 15. It's kind of like a little summary, he says. He says, look carefully then how you walk. Pay attention to how you walk. Pay attention to how you live. Are you a follower of Jesus? If the answer is yes, then you're in. Pay attention to how you're living. We've called you to a new way to live. Pay attention. Make sure that you walk not as unwise, but walk as wise. Making the best use of your time because the days are evil. 
Therefore, don't be foolish, but understand what the will of God is. And here's what he says. And do not get drunk with wine. We get that. What happens? I think Brad Paisley is the one who said, you put enough alcohol in you, you'd be wearing a lampshade. Why? Because the alcohol begins to, to consume and to lead you. It begins to direct you. You act and say and do things like, I can't believe I did that. I know. Had too much alcohol in you, and you did things you wouldn't have normally done. You got that picture in your mind? You're like, yes. Can we talk about something else? Don't be drunk with wine. Rather... Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. What what, what does that mean? In the same way that the alcohol causes you to act like you wish you hadn't, the Holy Spirit that dwells within you, that dwells within me, if you know Jesus as Savior, will lead you to act in ways you normally wouldn't But those ways will be walking according to God's agenda, walking in humility and unity, walking as an ambassador of God's love, walking as a reflector of God's light, walking in this newness of life as we represent our Lord who by His grace brought us into the family. I can't do all that. You don't have to. You just turn control over to the Holy Spirit. Let Him lead you. Let him guide you. You say, I I don't know how that works. Yeah, you do. If you know Jesus as your Savior, you know good and well what the voice of the Spirit sounds like in your life. He's the one you're constantly going, "Uh, no, I can't do that, Lord. No, no, I don't think I ought to do that. Uh, No, 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 that's, that's not me. That's not for me. God's like, yeah, it is. God don't yell. He whispers. He speaks to you in a way. He doesn't drive you. He doesn't accuse you. That's the enemy that does that. The Holy Spirit says, this is the way. You're going to go? And we're like, uh, I can't. I can't. What, what was you saying, Lord? Could you speak up? No, I'm not going to do it. You can hear me. The more we let him lead, the more we'll get up, say no to that, yes to this. The more we'll go, what do you want, God? I don't want what I want. I want what you want. The more we'll say, you know what? I'm going to love that person instead of, oh, I'm going to kill you in my mind. No, I'm going to love you. I'm going to pursue unity, even with folks that, quite frankly, left up to me, I don't even like to hang out with. But you know what? I'm going to pursue unity. And I'm going to see what humility might feel like. See what God does. It's a whole new way to walk. It's a whole new way to live. It's a whole new way to follow Christ now that you're in. So here's the question. How is your walk? Which one of those needs your most attention? You go, all of them, I know. Pick one, me too. Where do you struggle the most? You still walk in the way of death? It's like, I don't even know what you're talking about, Pastor Kevin. Well, then you're walking the way of death. And I would invite you to trust Jesus. Because his grace is big enough to bring you into if you'll just respond to that free gift that is yours. Maybe it is that you're sitting down. Maybe God brought you into the family and you're like, all right, I like this. Future eternity with Christ. Sins forgiven. Excellent. Where's the barca lounger? Let me sit down. Let me put my feet up and just when Jesus comes back, I'll be right here waiting on you, Lord. I'm just going to sit right here. It's not what he's called us to do. He's not said now sit. He said now walk. So if you're sitting down, probably in any of those areas, it's like, Lord, I've just been sitting down. I need to get up. I need to follow you. I've just been lazy. And you know what he'll do? He'll help you up. And he'll show you, all right, come on, let's go. Or maybe it is that you're not sitting. Maybe it is that you've kind of wandered back down the road a bit. Going back the other direction. Like, what do I do now? It's real simple. Turn around. Just just turn around. What do I do when I turn around? Just go, uh, Lord, um, I've been walking the wrong way. And I shouldn't have been doing that. And I recognize, I've been walking a while, can, can I come back up there with, with, with y'all? And he goes, come on. 
The same death and resurrection that saves you is the same death and resurrection that brings you from the wrong direction back up with the family. I don't know what you need today. I don't know how you need to respond. But here's what I do know. You don't need to respond to me because I'm just like you. But every one of us can respond to the one who's brought us in. And boy, if you're not in yet, please respond to him because that's the only way in. Through his death and resurrection is the only way. But you can receive it today if by faith you'll just say yes to him. Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. We ask that you'll help us today. Encourage us. Show us where we are sitting. Show us where we are wandering. God, show us where we've just kind of gotten a little lazy about how we're to be living as your children, whether it's in the body or out in the world, whether we need to turn up the love or we need to turn up the light. I pray you'll help us to see where humility's not really all that active. Help us to recognize where we need to forgive and maybe where we need to apologize so that unity might be restored in the body. God, help us to recognize anywhere our agenda is sticking its head up above yours. Help us to recognize the futility of trying to follow our way more than your way. Your way is where we will be fulfilled and best used. And ultimately, we want you to be glorified. God, help us to learn to hear the voice of your Spirit within us and learn how to say yes to whatever he says. God, we ask that you'll use us this week. Clean us if we're dirty. Help us up if we're sitting. Draw us to yourself if we're outside the family. God, we look for you to do whatever it is you want. We pray that we'll be ready to respond obediently. We love you and we thank you. First in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said.